Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The Fringe Seams. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is a Friday Sews video, so as always a huge thank you to Jen from Today in Jen Sewing for setting up this fabulous hashtag. If you are new to my channel then you're very very welcome and if you're a regular viewer or subscriber then welcome back. A huge thank you as always to anybody who's watched any of my previous videos, anybody who's left a like, anybody who's left a comment. Thank you very very much, I really do appreciate it. So how did I get on this week in the sewing room? So pretty good, um, as you will see by what I'm wearing, but more on that later. Um, when I left you last week, um, I was going to be traveling for the weekend. We had a family birthday, which was really, really nice. Got to catch up with all the family, which is always a good time. So no sewing was done at the weekend, but I did go fabric shopping. So um, I was able to pop into the fabric outlet. So there's two of those in Ireland and all their fabric is, well, was 4 a meter. It's now gone up to six euro a meter, but we won't give out about that. It's like a big, huge warehouse. It's mainly upholstery fabric. They do have a tiny amount of dressmaking fabric, but you will always find what you need in there and the staff are lovely. So I needed to buy fabric for curtains that I'm making for our bedroom. So the color is um, of the walls is a very, very, very dark navy. And I was on the lookout for kind of a mustardy, ochre style fabric. And I found this lovely fabric. So it's kind of a jacquard with kind of a twisty detail in it. And I think this would look really, really nice. So really good price. I think I got about eight or nine meters and at six euro a meter, you can't really give out because if you bought made to measure curtains, they would not cost 50 euro. So I was very, very happy with that. I now just need to get cracking and make them. So I'm hoping to get that done this week, but fingers crossed as my husband keeps asking, when are they going to be made? when they're made, darling. Anyway, so while I was there, um, they do have a tiny selection of dressmaking fabrics and I thought it'd be rude not to take a quick look. And I found this lovely jersey. So it's kind of a minty color, but it's almost kind of got a marl in it as well. And I've become really, really fond of this fabric um, for reasons which I'll show you shortly. But I think this will make a really, really cute jumper, um, very kind of summery color. And so I think I got about a meter and a half of this again for a really, really good price. So I couldn't leave it there, so it's washed ready to be made up, so I'm delighted with that. Oh, I also was able to pick up some matching thread for the curtains, which is great, and a new pair of snips because mine keep wandering, they just disappear. So that was my little fabric uh, trip. Then when I came back to Dublin, we were all a bit tired come Monday morning, having had a very hectic weekend. Um, it's always it's always a fun weekend, but you're always tired first thing Monday morning. So back to work. And then on Monday evening, of course, I had my lovely quilting bee. So I had a lovely, lovely time. And what I've started is my Crafty Studio patchwork parcel. So I think I showed that last week. And apologies for the rustling. So I was able to get it started. So here's the lovely pattern. So it's called the Gift Wrap Quilt by Anne-Marie in the Crafty Studio. I'll link the patchwork parcel below. And I cut out enough fabric just to make the first block because I just wanted to see how I got on. And here it is. This is the Christmas one, isn't it? So lovely. So beautiful reds, golds. It's a bit strange sewing it in April, but I wanted to get it made up. Uh, so it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, block. And then it's going to have this green sashing on the side. I just want to see how that looked. And uh, the beautiful gold um, poinsettias and stuff. It's lovely. So I got that block made up. Very, very happy with it. And then I managed to, um, over the week, cut out all the other pieces you need. So I spent the whole week cutting out all the little tiny pieces. And now I've got them sewn together all as strips. So you can see I've literally got wads and wads and wads of all the strips cut out so basically what i need to do is just sew these all together so I'm, it actually comes together pretty quickly once um once you've got the pieces cut out i was so happy that once i got all the pieces cut out they were all the correct size it was the correct number i needed i was delighted there was only one where i sewed them on back to front but that was easily um, easily remedied so i was very very happy oh and then it's got this lovely fabric uh, for the corner stones this kind of goldy um oatmealy color it's lovely so i'm hoping to get that um um not finished off but i think i'll get a good bit of that done now next week so i'm really looking forward to that then i just need to buy more batting and I need to buy backing fabric and get that done. So I'm really, really looking forward to um, having that finished and then all finished, put away, ready to, for Christmas then where we'll be surprised again by it. But it was really, really good fun and it's such a lovely little project to do, a little quick project. You can kind of pick it up and put it down as you need to, which is great. The other thing I got done this week was, you know how I feel about Izzy from uh, Dizzy Quilts and Sews, her Quilt As You Go block series that she's got on YouTube. So if you've been watching my channel, and I think a number of you are following on with her series as well, which is great. I've now got four of her Quilt As You Go blocks done. And then she released her fifth one last weekend. So I did that. So I was very, very lucky that my lovely aunt gifted me a huge bag of her kind of fabric scraps, 
threads and notions. I think there was a fibre mood magazine in there as well. So I think she's decluttering, but I'm a very, very grateful recipient of her declutter. Thank you very, very much. And she is this beautiful fabric. So it's kind of a ditzy fabric. And then this one is actually a Laura Ashley fabric from 1975 because it was still written on the cell, which was just great. Uh, so this is Dizzy's, uh, Dizzy, Izzy's latest block. Uh, and it's called the Big O, as you can see here. So it's very, very straightforward. It's just squares and half square triangles and then an O. But the fun part comes with the free motion embroidery so it's probably easier to see it on the back not quite sure will that come out in the gingham you can see these little circles it's called pebbles so it gives a lovely lovely texture so I still haven't got the hang of free motion embroidery I think my stitches are a little bit too big but it gives the overall effect which I think looks really really nice so I've just got all these pinned together I now have five blocks which is great none of them match but I don't mind it's fun it's a little sampler quilt so this is block number five so very very happy with this so that was my little quilting update. What else did I do this week? So I finished off my second Frocktails toile. So what I did this week was I lined the bodice. So, and you will see all of this if you tune in Saturday. So if you're watching this on Friday, it'll be tomorrow at 8 p.m. And I'll put the link below on the Crafty Studio um, YouTube channel. I'm going to be a guest on the lovely Amory's channel. We're going to be doing a YouTube live all about Frocktails. I'm so excited. So I'm going to bring up um, my toile to show everybody, my dress from last year and my dress from the year before that. And we're going to be talking all things Frocktails, what to expect, a little bit of fabric, a little bit of dress chat and just general chit chat. So if you do have any questions, please let me know in the comment box below here. Or if you'd like to type them directly into the live, that would be great. Or send me a DM over on Instagram, however you'd like. But I would love it if you would join us and just join in on the, the merriment and chat all things Frocktail. So it'd be great, great to see you there. So I'll link that below. So what I did this week is I lined the bodice. So basically I took the material from my first toile and used it to line the bodice and it came out pretty well. So it's it's uh, all lovely and, um, and enclosed on that side. What I used was I made the so over Betty dress I've made that a good few times and on the Betty dress it gives you an all-in-one facing and on that it shows you how to so you're effectively lining a bodice but with no seams of the shoulder so I knew I had that pattern so I went back to look at that to know how to do the shoulder seams and that was great to be able to do that so now it's fully fully lined what I've now decided is I'm going to line the whole thing so I'm effectively going to make two dresses but I think for frocktails you push the boat out you do your lining you end up doing 16 darts, but look, it's just got to be done. So very happy with how this came out. This is my second toile. I should say it's the Mary dress. I'll pop in a picture here again. If you haven't heard me talking about this forever, I do apologize. It's two weeks away. You won't have to hear about it much after that. So yes, this is my toile and I'll be talking more about that um, on the Crafty Studio um, YouTube. So be sure to tune into that. So that's what I got done as well. So I'm delighted. Uh, what else did I get? Well, I'll tell you this. So this is the Adele blouse, which I spoke about last week. And I do apologise. I was a bit down in the dumps last week after my after my tricky, tricky week. But it's all fine. All is rosy in the garden. My beautiful buttons arrived from the lovely Becky. These are jazz and wear buttons from um, what Beck sews. They are perfect, Becky. Thank you so, so, so much. So these arrived last week. I was able to sew them on. All the buttonholes went in perfectly as well. It was just marvellous. So this is the Barra Studio Adele blouse. A few issues with the pattern. Uh, one lovely lady commented that there is actually a sew along in German, which I didn't realise, and there's English subtitles. So I had a quick look at that and it answered a few questions in that the collar piece, they just want you to fold it to cut in the fold. Fine, but it still says cut one and you need two. But anyway, um, and for the rest of it, the, the things that I struggled with or that I would have done slightly better weren't really addressed. So I will definitely make this pattern again because I absolutely love how it came out. But now that I know what tweaks to make, I think it'll be much, much easier and much more enjoyable. So next time. So thank you for listening to me whinge and moan about this pattern last week. But I do absolutely love how it came out. So um, I made a size 38 grade into a 40, which I forgot to mention last week. And the fit is spot on. I didn't have to lengthen it or anything. It's perfect. And it's got the beautiful frills. It's got the button placket. So if I stand up, I put a little little rosy cheeks label here saying handmade so it's nice to put on the outside and it's got this beautiful panel at the side and yeah it just came together very very nicely I bound the neckline here with the specky seamstress binding because otherwise that would have been a raw edge in the sew along they do tell you just to overlock the raw, the raw edge but much much happier with it being bound here so I think it looks really really cute I'm not quite sure I don't think I'd wear it buttoned up 
I think I just wear a little bit open like that, but so, so happy with this. This is my entry for So April Blouse 24. So a huge thank you to Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Gabrielle from the Cloth Edit for hosting this challenge. I'll eventually get this picture up on Instagram to actually end the challenge now that it's all finished. But it was a fabulous challenge. I loved um, my blouse, how it came out. I love seeing all the other entrants on, on YouTube I've, or on Instagram, I should say. There are some beautiful, beautiful patterns out there and ones that I've been noting down that I'd like to make in future. So it's a fabulous challenge. There's still time to enter uh, before the end of April um, if you would like to. It's open worldwide, basically. So blouse in April, so you have a few more days. But it's a fabulous challenge and I'm really, really glad to take part in it this year. And I can can't wait to enter this lovely blouse so if you do have any questions on this pattern please let me know in the comment box below i should say that the fabric for this is the most beautiful cotton lawn from sew me something that i got from the lovely emma uh, recently at the stitch festival and i only bought a meter and i got this well out of meter which is brilliant and i just love it seasonally inappropriate slightly for today a little bit chilly but i can't wait to wear this more in the summer and i'm kind of having thoughts now of making a white one or else one in a beautiful blue and white striped shirting fabric so yeah now that I've got this pattern sorted, I really am going to make some more. So that is my Adele blouse. The next thing I was whinging and whining about last week was my high cuff sweater. And I'm very, very happy to say that from the from the close of defeat, I have rescued it. And here is my high cuff sweater. So you would have seen this last week, except that now it actually has a bottom band. So this fabric again was from Stitch um, Festival. It was from Stitch Fabrics, so M. Rosenberg and Sons. It's a beautiful, it's kind of a crepe fabric, I think. And then I've just got the navy ribbing. I bound the necklines, Becky seems just again with these lovely daisies. And I've got a lovely little um, Sarah Hart's label here as well saying made, uh, made by me. So what I did was I had measured out the waistband on my last week and seen how much I need to add on. And basically I just traced around that with the new ribbing that I had ordered from Ecobee and just cut out a new waistband. So it's not quite tight, which isn't how I wanted it because I wanted it quite loose because the top is quite tight. Anyway, I made a size small, it should have made a medium. So, but it came out really well and it's got the nice kind of raised back at the, at the back. So I really like it. It's a little bit too small, I'm not going to lie, but I did wear it yesterday and it was perfectly fine. The neckline is a little bit tight and it's a little bit restrictive, but, but it's not gonna stop me wearing it, which I'm really, really happy about. And I just love this fabric and I really enjoyed wearing it. So I'm going to make this pattern again. I'm going to make a size medium and I'm going to measure out the waistband before I cut anything out. I think that's lessons learned. And then I think hopefully all of this as a lovely pattern in my stash that I can just whip up anytime I have some leftover woven or some leftover jersey. So thank you for putting up with me when I had, what, what shall I call it, a little meltdown over these two patterns, but I'm glad to say they've both been rectified and I love how both of these came out, so delighted. So those are the two tops to get finished, which was great. The next thing I got done this week, so pleased I got this done and I love it. This is the, it's called a cuddle cardigan, but this is the sweater version of the cuddle cardigan. And here it is, so you'll see now why I'm enjoying the minty color. So this is a Mizuzu patterns and it's called the cuddle cardigan. You can make it in short length, long length. You can make it in a cardigan. You can make it with these inseam pockets. You can make it with um, patch pockets or you can make it with no pockets. So I made the short sweater version with the inseam pockets and the lovely V-neck here. And I love how this came out. So the fabric is beautiful. This is lovely green jersey with matching uh, ribbing that I got from the lovely Sarah from So Sarah Style. Thank you so much. I've made it up and I just love how this came out. So it has a lot of pattern pieces. You have to work out which version you're doing because they're all on different tiles, all on different pages. There's different files for the common pattern pieces. There's different files for the cardigan, different files for the sweater. But once you have that all in your head, it's fine. Then they give you different pattern pieces if you're using ribbing for this, if you're using main fabric for it. So just you need to keep your wits about you as to what actually you're cutting out. They do also give you a pattern piece for a lovely band that goes across here. So I wasn't quite brave enough to try that in my first version, but I think I will do it the next time. It looks really nice. Basically, you reduce it from the back and from the, the back sleeve. So the sleeve is actually in two parts and it makes this lovely color block band all the way along the side and all the way along the sleeve. It looks really cool. But I love this crossover neckline at the back. Then I did the crossover here. It's not perfect, but it's not bad for a first attempt. I was watching um, the lovely Carol from So Carol, and I think she made a jersey top recently. It was more a kind of polo shirt, but it had this style. I think it was a style art pattern she made, 
and she was going over the instructions and how to do it. And the instructions on this, on the Mizuzu, were very, very good, actually. There was one confusing bit where they had you flap a bit around the back, and there's kind of an easier way to do that if you're looking at it, but you'll know if you're making it. But this went in quite well, just um, drawing on the line at the back and then cutting into it, almost like you do a welt pocket kind of thing. So it went in okay. I had to go over it once or twice, and there's a lot of steam on this to, to press it out, but I think it's not bad once you're wearing it. And then it's all top stitch in the outside. It looks quite nice. So yeah, very happy with that. I think it gives a beautiful finish on the neckline. Then, of course, I bound the neckline with dinosaurs. I wonder, can you see that? Can I pull this up for you? Little dinosaurs, which are adorable. I bought this from the Specky Seamstress at the Stitch Festival. I made a beeline for it. I said, oh, I'd love them to make um, something for my boys. No, I took it for myself because I love them. Um, and then also what I did was I put a little label on the sleeve. So I saw this on the little Rosie Cheeks Instagram during the week and she had tagged somebody. It's since disappeared in her stories. I can't remember who it was, but they put the label on the sleeve and I thought that was a really cute idea. So I've put my little pencils on the sleeve. I think it's really, really nice. So love how this came out. Love the pockets here. Very straightforward to do. I made a size CC which matches my bust but it's a size smaller than my waist and hips but looking at the finished garment measurements um, it's just straight up straight down and I thought the CC fit perfectly and it does. It's quite short so I added an inch to the bodice and an inch to the sleeves. The sleeves are perfect. I'm delighted I did that. I did add an inch to the bodice but it's still quite cropped but it's 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 a, it's a nice cropped length shall we say but if I hadn't added that it probably would have been too short so I was glad I did that so this is my cuddle sweater cardigan, which I absolutely love. And I think I will make more. I think it'd be lovely in a colour blocked version. And I might give a go with the cardigan as well. I think it's absolutely lovely. So I would highly recommend that. And Sarah, thank you again for the beautiful fabric. So that was a roundup of my week in the sewing room. Speaking of sewing rooms, a few people have been asking about the progress of my sewing room. So the electrician is due. Then we need to polyfill it and then get it painted, then take the obligatory trip to Ikea to get a few more bits of furniture and then hopefully I can move back in, which I'm super, super excited about. Um, one thing I've lost in all the kerfuffle upstairs is the tweezers for my overlocker, which makes changing threads really difficult. So I'm hoping that appears somewhere when I move back in. Um, I also got my hair done last week, which I love getting done. So a little bit blonded again, and I really shouldn't leave it so long in the future. But anyway, the lady I go to is just absolutely brilliant. I love going to her. Uh, so what are my plans for this week? So it's quiet enough in the French Seams household. Um, YouTube live on Saturday. Be sure to tune in. And I have to get my frock tails dress finished this week. I really don't want to leave it into the next week because we're only two weeks out and I want to get it all done by next week. So I'm, yeah, really need to get that done. Um, I've also got a cheeky day off this week, so I'm hoping to spend the whole day sewing, which is an absolute luxury. Uh, so that's about it. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good week sewing in your sewing room or your sewing space. Um, if you like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Um, if you've made any of these or if you have any questions on anything I've spoken about today, please let me know in the comment box below or let me know what you're working on, how you're getting on in your sewing space. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely weekend full of lovely sewing and some nice weather. I hope it's getting a little bit more spring-like when you where you are but thank you as always for joining me and I will catch you all again very very soon